Like most of us, I ran out of output pins once or twice over the years. At times I just went with a bigger board like moving from the Uno to the Mega, but at times it just doesn't make any sense. So to solve this, let me introduce you today to the great 8-bit shift register that allows us with a small price of 3 GPIOs to gain at least 8 outputs and you can daisy chain many more. For this tutorial I chose the HC595 shift register. There are many different makers and models, they vary in their electric spec, mainly current rate, but they all work the same way when it comes to the code and the wiring. One of the coolest features of this chip is that you can daisy chain more than one to it and I will cover it later in the video. Let's start by covering the chip pinout and the wiring needed to start working with it. We'll use the great written tutorial on the Arduino website as a reference. Link in the description. We got the Q0 and Q1 through Q7. Those are the output things. The next important things are the clock pin, the clock latch pin, and the input pin. I do want to mention the, um, the MR, the master recall, and the OE, the output enable pins. Uh, those are left out on this example and the only downside of it that the lights will turn on their last state or some arbitrary uh, state every time you switch on the power. Um, that's the only downside but it's not using two extra pins and it's covered in the datasheet if you want to look at how to do that. Okay, the app is pretty simple and we got a great diagram and image for this in the tutorial. I did not see any example of hooking it up to into ESP8266, so I decided to use one for this tutorial. Here is the wiring for the ESP8266 Mimos D1 Mini. I kept the color scheme of the original sketch. The serial data input goes to the Mimos D7, the clock pin goes to the Mimos D6, and the clock pin latch goes to the Mimos D5. Note that the LED have resistors. The original Post talks about a 470 ohm, I used a 220 ohm and I think that's more than enough, but do use resistors for your LED. At times, if the LED flickers, you will need to add a, a 0.1 farad capacitor between the latch pin and the ground. After all this hard work of wiring, let's skip into the code and see how this magic works. We define a global variable for each of the pins so it will be easier to refer to them later in the code. In the setup, we set them all as output pins. We loop from 0 to 255. In order for the chip to know we are about to send data, we set the latch pin to low. We'll use the shift out function to send the number to the pin, and then we set the latch pin high again, letting the chip know we are down and to output it on the Q0 through Q7. The value that is passed will be represented in binary on the LEDs. If you've never done any binary math before, I got a video on this as well, link in the description and on the screen as well. What we are seeing now is a binary count on the LED from 0 to 255, when Q0 is the less significant bit and Q7 is the most significant. Very important parameters in the shift out function that I did not cover before is the bit order. It got two options, MSB first and LSB first, which refer to the which will be the first bit to be pushed into the chip, the less or the more significant one. And the end result will be how it will be displayed on the Q0 through Q7. If we take the previous example, and change the bit order, we'll get a reverse result in the LED display. Now, adding 8 output pins in the price of 3 GPIOs, it's okay, but not amazing. But as I mentioned in the beginning, we can daisy chain them. We'll extend the clock and the latch pin from the first IC to the second one. We'll connect the output of the first IC to the input of the second one. We'll give it power and of course connect all the LEDs and we are ready to go. With the current code we can see that it's working and the second IC is minus one from the first IC value. Due to the fact that we shift one value at a time and once we do so the previous one gets shifted 
from the first IC to the second one. Let's upload this code that changes both ICs at the same time by doing two shift out between each latching and see how it works. And as you can see, I control all the 16 LEDs. Hope this video will help you in your next project. If you didn't do it till now, please subscribe, give the thumbs up, leave a comment and see you next time.